My name is Patrick Hopkins. I'm an assistant professor in mechanical and aerospace engineering at UVA. I was hired on about a year and a half ago under the Rolls-Royce initiative. So the primary focus of my lab group and my research here at UVA is looking at heat transfer in systems that are much, much smaller than the human hair, for example. So heat transfer in computer chips, heat transfer in iPads, iPhones, how we can make how we can make that heat transfer more efficient so that we can make devices faster and cheaper for the general public. And that's morphed into more than just a heat transfer problem. Recently, we've been very interested in how to use that heat to generate energy. So now it's become an aspect of using heat to be able to create power for everyday devices. We typically look at systems that are smaller than you can see with your eye. So consequently, what we need to use to measure the heat transfer in the processes and things that are smaller than you can see are very intricate measurement techniques. So what we turn to are laser systems. So what we have here is a femtosecond laser system. So a femtosecond is 10 to the minus 15 seconds. That time frame is on the order of the time it takes for atoms to oscillate, for electrons to carry charge and scatter with atoms, and these are all processes that carry heat. So in order for us to measure something, on the nanoscale or on the atomistic scale, we have to actually have a, a ruler that has a measurement that's that short. So that's why we have this femtosecond system here. So this is a thermoreflectance system in the fact that we have femtosecond pulses coming out every 10 nanoseconds, 10 to the minus nine seconds. So what you're effectively looking at is basically a machine gun of laser pulses. And those laser pulses are so short in time that when they're directed down all these optics, and they're focused onto our sample, we induce this strong heating event and we can start to watch temperature decay and heat transfer processes. A stat that's very, very intriguing is over 50% of the energy used in the United States is wasted. So for every watt that we consume from natural resources, we're wasting over half a watt that's just emitted as heat. A great example of that is a light bulb. When you turn on a light bulb, it gets light, but if you let that light bulb sit for a minute and you touch it, it gets very, very hot. That's wasted heat. So part of the excitement of looking at heat and energy on the nanoscale is being able to utilize it at the atomistic level to try and create power for buildings such as this, for cars, for people, to try and make a more energy efficient world. So we're interested in looking at heat transfer at different temperatures. And for that, we use this cryostat to cool down our sample down to temperatures that we might find in very cold applications, such as space applications. And in this case, we have liquid nitrogen, which is 77 Kelvin. So it's creating a very, very cold event, cooling down our sample, where we can now look at how heat is affecting things at very, very low temperatures, where oscillations of heat are changing in time. UVA has a very, very unique situation where we not only have a top-notch engineering school, but we have top-notch programs across the entire university. And the reason that, in my opinion, we have this very unique situation is the school's just the right size where collaboration is very, very easy between departments, between disciplines, and between schools. For example, on a daily basis, I can walk out of my office, walk 10 feet across the engineering school, and end up in the material science department where they're doing very exciting nanostructure synthesis. Or I can walk another 10 feet in the other direction, end up in the electrical engineering department, and find people that are making nano devices that need to find out more about the heat transfer. So it's a very, very easy place to collaborate.